why take art? This is a huge question and I hope that this short presentation will give you some ideas of how you could answer that question. So first of all, studying art and design GCSE opens lots of doors for exciting careers. Here's just a few examples. Fashion design, start salary could be for anything from 14,000 when you begin up to 50,000 when you get more experience. Art and craft therapies, big area of development within the NHS, especially under the pandemic at the moment, mental wellbeing has never been higher in the priority of uh, people's health. Footwear design, costume design for film and television, makeup artists and special effects, illustration for children's books, for medical journals, graphic design. What about visual effects for films working on the computer? Furniture, furniture design and jewellery design. These are just a few of the careers that art and design could lead you to, sorry. Anyway, the most exciting thing that I thought when I was choosing art was, yeah, I loved art, but also there was no end of year 11 written exams. That meant no revision, no sleepless nights before the exam tomorrow. Big factor for me that. Okay then, so the art GCC is split up into two parts. Part one is what is called component one and that's your personal portfolio or we tend to just call that your coursework and you start that in year 10. As soon as you start the course in year 10 you start your coursework and there are three projects that I've designed for that part of the course we need about two, you've got to show that you can uh, not just draw, but maybe work in 3D or work on the computer. You need to show you've got a few different um, skill areas within your personal portfolio. And those three coursework projects hopefully will help you demonstrate that. And then the other part is called the externally set assignments. Again, we tend to call that an exam, but it is not an exam like I've just described. It's not a written exam. And for that one, um, that starts in January of year 11 and the exam board set the question paper. There are seven questions on there. You can choose which question you want to uh, study and then um, or re respond to, not study, but respond to. It's like a little mini project, but you're in charge of that. So you'll be able to use the skills and the knowledge and the imagery that you perhaps use in your personal portfolio, your coursework part of the course to help you with your externally set assignment or exam and the weighting as it says there is 60% of the grade comes from your coursework and 40% comes from the exam. So um, it starts in January, you have about seven weeks worth of lessons to plan, develop, explore, record, experiment, with all the different materials that you choose to work with. And then it says you've got uh, 10 hours then of supervision time to produce a final piece. And down here, we've got two examples of um, exam final outcomes. Okay, so let's have a brief look at the structure. Oh, the other thing you could do is look at the uh, school Instagram account to see what kind of artwork you might be producing. The address is up there in the corner. Okay then, so GCSE art is structured very similar to Key Stage 3 art. So we've looked at this in class. This is the creative process pyramid. So we start off in the red section where the teacher is leading the lessons. Uh, I'd be teaching you how to use certain materials, how to work, to do certain techniques. We'll be investigating the work of certain artists and I'd be helping you learn how to draw specific subject matter. Okay, so that's the red area. In the amber area, which is the area that you're just beginning to go into uh, in school with your school project, that's where you start putting together what I've taught you in your own way, developing your own ideas. And then at the top, 
that's where you produce your final piece of work. Okay, so GCSE, very similar, it's just this middle part, this idea development is bigger. That means you get more input, All right? So we have generating ideas, but then this section here, that's developing. So you pick your best idea and then you develop it further. How can you make it better? Okay. So art is quite special in that um, response. In that case, you are able to put a lot of yourself into art GCSE. And I think that makes it special. It's special because as we can see in this little poster, it's a subject you do with your heart, your head and your hands. Okay, and remember, there's no written exam at the end of year 11. Okay, let's have a quick look at these coursework projects. So the first one I've, could be called a few different names. I've called it Nature versus Man Made this year, but it could be to do with contrast in your surroundings. But basically, it's a drawing project. So we uh, explore more drawing techniques, more drawing medias, but more importantly, we play around with drawing on different surfaces and glaring up images. And we're going to um, bring in the computer to do that. So you'll end up perhaps making um, repeat patterns or what we call con converse conversational prints, prints that make you talk, but there's a bit of a narrative behind it. Start with a project sheet like you've done in Key Stage 3, and then we'll look at artists, of work. So we've got uh, Maya's work there on an artist called Michael Craig Martin. We've got Lillian Maya's work showing um, with the skulls layering up the images. We've got Carell's pattern work. We've got Lily's um, line drawing there. And what I'm trying to get across to you is that studying art will teach you how to develop unique and original ideas. And this project will help you to think like a textile or surface decoration designer, maybe like a graphic designer or a digital illustrator, perhaps fashion if you're creating patterns, you might imagine your patterns on some kind of costume or, or um, item of clothing, or you might just think of yourself as a fine art illustrator. Okay, coursework project two, this is a new thing for one in a million because we're trying to bring in a little bit of 3D work. Okay, and the 3D work, will be based on recycling pre-used paper or card products, bringing in uh, wire and paper mache techniques, which is the next project that I'd like to do with you in year nine. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. Okay, and we're thinking more abstract now and conceptual thinking. Again, we start with a project sheet and we're looking at cell structures. So you might want to bring in maybe science illustration. Again, that's something else that's quite um, prevalent at the moment. The pandemic has inspired scientists to look at ways of presenting images to us. And we've got one there based on um, a virus. So studying art may well, well, it will teach you to think more abstractly and look at things more closely, more closely than most people do and look at them in a different way. So who would have thought you could create some artwork out of a, you know, what a virus looks like under a microscope, okay? So this project might get you thinking about what it's like to be a jewellery designer, maybe a set designer, for film and telev television making props, maybe a florist, furniture maker. You might think about being a ceramicist, making things three-dimensional to clay, or like I've already mentioned, a scientific illustrator. And then the last project is very much based on you. Okay, It's called Emotional Self and Identity, and it's a self-portrait project. Start again with the project sheet. Same structure as before, I would teach you how to draw yourself. You might recognise those two year 11 students. Then we'd look at how you can use colour, line, uh, shape, texture and form to express different emotions in a portrait. Okay, throughout all your personal portfolio uh, or coursework, you will be learning how to present information in a very interesting visually coherent way so other people understand how you're thinking, where you're getting your ideas from. You'll be introduced to some iconic portrait images. So studying art will teach you the importance of self-reflection, individuality 
and imagination. Okay, and there we've got a nice, lovely final portrait piece of work there. And then this project will get you thinking like a creative therapist, a fine artist, possibly even a makeup artist. This one, this image here was created using actual makeup to, to paint with on the paper. And then possibly even a photographer taking images to work with in the, in the first place. Okay then, so to recap, the course has got two parts. Personal portfolio, that's your coursework, which is worth 60%. And then the externally set assignment, can refer to that as the exam, but it is not a written exam. There is no written exam in this course, okay? And, you know, I keep ramming home that I think art is special because it's a subject you do with your heart, your head and your hands, okay? You're learning in a different way. And the first slide that I introduce you to should give you a little glimpse of what kind of job you could go into and what kind of money you could earn. If I just highlight this, sentence here, it says the creative industries generate 84.1 billion pounds in the UK. And that's not me making that up. I've got that from this booklet of information. We study AQA Art and Design, GCSE, and this booklet is on their website and it gives you more information about the course. And then finally, hopefully we've got time for this. Um, what other what, what better way could I sell this subject than getting perhaps the most famous British artist, living British artist at the moment, and he comes from Bradford. Let's have a listen to David Hockney. Tell us why you should study art. There's a deep desire in us to make pictures. I mean, they've been drawing for 30,000 years. The teaching of drawing is teaching people to look. That's what it's doing. It was really when I was at art school that I started to see the relationship between history, philosophy, politics and art. Prior to that, I, I thought that art was just making pretty pictures. Actually, art is connected to, you know, life you can't teach art in the same way you can teach french french exists whether whether you do it or not but when you're doing art the center of doing art is in yourself most of the literate subjects do not ask that of them so this develops an entirely different realm of skill creativity is critical thinking and without it how are you gonna really open up and ask harder questions? And art opens all of those kind of passages and possibilities to think beyond what we already know. In a child's education, that doors need to be open to other universes, other modes of thinking, and art is a non-pre-described, dangerous world full of possibility. And I think that's a vital space for children to have in the formative years of their education. From a top-down level, you don't have innovation if you don't have arts. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if you're going to study history or geography or science, you still need to be creative, because the people who are the outliers in those fields are the most creative people. To have art in schools be eroded, which is happening at the moment, is disastrous for Britain, I think, because our best industry is the creative industry. Art and cultural production is at the very center of what makes a society what it is. And for an entire new generation not to know what is the cultural and visual history of ourselves is kind of denying our own identity. Art is a reflection of the society that we are, the kind of mirror that art holds up, the way that art helps define the identity of a nation, that you can trace that back historically. It's deeply embedded in humanity. What art education does to people who are not going to be artists is giving them the opportunity to build certain aspect of themselves that otherwise will be either ignored, undeveloped or repressed. It's all about kids finding out who they are and they're all different. But you can be whatever you want to be is something that art certainly taught me. 
it can access a part of your brain, body, spirit, mind that nothing else can. Nothing is more stimulating, exciting, consoling than looking at a brilliant painting. Art in schools shouldn't be sidelined. I think it should be right there, right up in the front, because I think art teaches you to deal with the world around you. It's the oxygen that actually makes all the other subjects breathe. There's a great quote by John Ruskin. Art shows us what it is to be human. And really, that's, that's why art should be on the curriculum. A super little piece of film there. Hopefully, um, I've informed you about Art GCSE and you can get from, you've understood my passion for the subject. Uh, it is a subject that you need to feel passionate about to do well. So have a little think and make your decision. <laughs>